Hey everybody, um, as the title says, I'm not going to be working on Epson ever again. Um, long story short, this came in. I actually started to do a video on replacing the exhaust fan. It had a bad exhaust fan. Uh, the lamps weren't lasting long and the way they were failing indicated that the exhaust fan wasn't spinning right. So it was sent in checked it sure enough the exhaust fan wasn't spinning right it was making some weird noises so I found a replacement exhaust fan 80 bucks for a stupid fan I don't know why this is $80 maybe because the blades stick out like that I don't know so I replaced the fan to replace the fan drop the lamp door so to replace the fan you take the main board out this comes off this little bracket here the front comes off and then this whole assembly lifts out you can see there's the fan wires so I did that I disconnected the main board took everything apart you know not a not a real crazy repair very, very, very straightforward. Then, when I finished, I went and I put it back together. I uh, turned it on. The fan came on. It was much quieter. That was good. But I don't get any video. Uh, we get the Epson splash screen, but that's it. Nothing. <clears throat> How that can happen by changing a fan, I have no idea. In fact, let's put my little bypass tool in, and I will show you. So let's get the um, power plugged in. I have my laptop connected. Let's turn that on. Waiting for the projector to finish its boot. Oh, I got to sign it. Can't use my fingerprint when I have gloves on. So let's put our. Let's see. Alright, so there we go. I have the. Uh, that open. Let's get YouTube so I don't have any copyright violations. Uh. Alright, so now I have a video running, so I'll let that run in the background. So I have, there we go, we got a video running, which is good. Tank Masters, give them a sub if you don't already. Great channel, Brian and Craig and crew are awesome. But anyway, let's see what we got going on here. Make sure, yep, that's plugged in good and power so we should see the lamp there we go lamps coming on watch the wall you can see the Epson coming up there you see the way it flashed like that I don't know what that's about So even if I go to, if I, I gotta wait for that to finish blinking. But if I hit source, I get nothing. And the computer even sees the uh, projector. So if. Let's go to extend, keep, so this is number one and then number two, 
is the other display. So it sees it. But the projector, and you guys can't see it, but if I turn the light off right now, you would see like a gray box right there. And no matter what happens, if I hit source, if I hit escape, I hit menu, nothing. So I started checking over everything, just going through everything. Voltage from the power supply is good. These regulators are all good. Obviously the LCDs are plugged in fine because I had the Epson splash. But I noticed this chip is getting very warm. And this chip that's under here is getting incredibly hot too. Uh, the HDMI comes in and it does end up hitting those two chips. So I kind of wonder, I don't know, removing the main board, maybe I... I don't know, static maybe, even though I did, you know, make sure I was grounded and anytime I touch a main board I try to touch it by the sides, you know, it's it's not that hard to handle one of these safely. So it went from replacing a fan to now a main board with no video input. So let's turn this off and then you'll see, in fact before I turn it off, let's just Let's see if the computer, yeah, see the computer goes back to one monitor. So obviously something is talking, but we're not getting any video out of it. So let's shut it down. And then I'm going to let it cool down a little bit, and then we will put this in. Now, because of the way the failure happened obviously the customer is not paying for that customers paying for the fan repair only because somehow this is my responsibility I'm not gonna say it's my fault because I still don't know how it happened um, you know it, it is my fault technically because I have possession of the projector blah 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 um, but who knows who knows I still don't see how what I did could have caused this, but but it's always with Epson. It's always something difficult like this with Epson, and I just, I'm sick of it. Uh, it's just getting parts for them is ridiculous. Getting service info is impossible. They design these not to be serviceable as much as possible. You have to replace whole everything. It's just, forget it. So... This is the last Epson I am working on, period. So let me move my laptop out of the way, move things around here, and then we'll start replacing that main board. All right, so what I'm going to do now is get the old main board out. Um, we do have to take the back off for that. To take the back off, there are clips Oops. down here. Push that one back, that one, that gets it loose. Now there are no screws going in through the back, but it is kind of clipped in. So I'm not going to actually take the back off until I get the main board loose. I will disconnect that wire though. So next let's take out all the parts that are in the way. So let me get my little bypass tool out and then the screw and that screw. Then that lifts off. We're going to leave the lamp assembly. That does not need to come out. Again, we're just taking the main board out. So air temp sensor, low voltage fan, air intake fan, power supply fan, power supply temperature. It felt kind of... Eh, that's alright. It felt a little funny. Um, low voltage number two fan and low voltage connector. Then the keyboard wire. Unplug that. That goes to the uh, keyboard control. Then on this side, ballast lamp fan, auto iris, 
uh, temperature sensor. What do we have here? Let's see, these are set, at the, oh, this is for the uh, limit switches for the cinema filter, cinema filter motor, the fan that I replaced, lamp temps, or the exhaust temp sensor, that guy right there, and then we have the uh, lens, the lens motor and lens end switches. Then the lens control, lens shift, Lens shift, lens shift, um, infrared receiver, and then Bluetooth in the front. So that's all of those connectors, then the LCDs, and these are tricky. Two fingers, actually let me zoom in, because this is, like I said, the last time I'm going to show repair on an Epson, because I hate them. So I'm going to flip that up, flip that up, use two fingers, use one finger, it'll come up crooked and you'll lose connection, you'll lose the way it's mounted. Then I'm going to slide that LCD cable out and just gently tuck it into the hole like that. Don't want to bend those any more than you have to. Then we take some screws out. Go around one, turn that clutch up a little, two. Oh, you guys can't see. All right, I took out that one and this one, so now we're at this one. I actually, may need to take out the frame as well because if I remember correctly the uh, the metal piece underneath that's multi pieces it's not just one frame that wraps all the way around I think I'm going to take out uh, this one here and possibly that one down there, but let's see. Yeah. So that one. And then also this piece here. That one. Because that's on that same metal. And then this one down here. I think that will do it. Yeah, that should do it. Because we need to release the uh, tension so this back piece can come up. See, like that. That needs to lift up a little. See, I had to lift up and then that comes out. So I'll set that here. So then we have, oh, we got these guys. it for the screws and then we do have the um, those five millimeter nuts these guys should probably check the uh, new main board and see if it came with that bracket or not
we go. All right. So there's the main board. What I think is wrong, if you kind of look, you see the, the heat marks there? That is not by the lamp. That is after the lamp assembly. So that really shouldn't, I don't know. I feel like that heat happened from the, uh, this piece underneath. We gotta, I think we have to take all this off too. So take that one out. Keep that one separate. And then the ones on these black plastic piece. That should release the entire uh, metal frame. Let me just get my hands on it so it doesn't all just go dropping on me here. Heat sink. Let's set that there. There we are. Bracket and cover come off, and now we can see the main board heat pad. This was getting pretty warm. That here is getting pretty warm. There's the HDMI switcher. You can see HDMI comes in, goes to here, comes out of here, goes through those holes through those vias to here cuts over I don't know why they do that it must be something in the middle because it's a multi-layer board then it comes back through there and into the chip the um, LCDs we can follow these wires are going over to that same chip so most likely something get this off. Something happened to this chip most likely. See if we can get this up without it falling apart. There we go. Did get a little crack but that'll be all right. So I think this is what failed. I don't know if maybe BGA connection if I reflow it maybe. I don't know. I don't want to take the chance though because it didn't have this problem when it came in. It wasn't until I started working on it that that happened. So I have a possibly repairable 5040 UB main board, but not holding my breath. So let me get the new board. Here's the replacement that we're going to install. There we go. And the first thing I noticed, none of that heat stuff over here. So that's good. This actually looks just nicer than the other one. Doesn't, the other one looks kind of crusty compared to this. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, so let's slide the chassis back. And let's see. Let's get this ready. start. Let's see what screws can I start with here. Let's put our heat pad back down. So need that. I may have to pause this. I, I really want to record as much as possible, but I can't take a chance on causing another problem. Because this already cost me about uh, 
what did this cost me? Almost 500 bucks. I went from possibly making a hundred and I don't know, 120 bucks or so to um, this costing me 120 minus five something. So <clears throat> can't have anything else go wrong. So I'm going to move the camera to a different spot and you guys are just going to kind of have to watch from where it is. All right. I know this isn't the best view, but like I said, as much as I want to share, I don't want to cost myself more money. All right, those are in. Let's get this stuff over here. I'm going to put these back. Put these back fasteners on for the uh, serial NVGA port. There we go. Face it that way. So, yeah, I mean, it's my fault, so whatever, but it's just a drag. You know, I'm basically paying 300 and some bucks to fix somebody's projector. But that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you eat the bear, and sometimes the bear eats you. Life will go on. Rather have uh, a happy customer and all that. It's only money, right? Although I am uh, trying to trying to buy a house, with the way the market is, mm, and with the way my money is, mm, so I don't know. piece of this heat their uh, static anti-static ground pad foam right here it's poking out you get something to put that back where it should be let's see a little flathead tweezers maybe let's use this aluminum solder tool shove back underneath. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's knock those back down. Alright, those are good. Now, let's see, let me snug this down. Good. Then this. Let's see, maybe we'll do there's one, two. Back is all screwed together. We still need a few on the top, but those will go in once the board is back in. So before I set the board back in, let me just check all this stuff. This was a little tricksy, so I wanted to keep all that under here so that when the board goes in, it 
In fact, I'll use that that to hold it. There we are. All right. So far so good. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the perimeter screws started. This one goes down, pardon me. All right, those are going the right way. Oh, actually, these have to be loose when we put the back on. So let me take that back out. The uh, the rear screws. These two need to be loose so that we can put that back on. So, in fact, let's put the back on now. And just to be clear, it's not that I think Epson is a bad manufacturer or brand or you know if somebody has an Epson they're foolish or whatever I don't believe that I don't think that at all I just don't want to repair them anymore because it's a hassle and they're a hassle getting parts and service info is impossible Epson won't give it to me the only way I can get it is if I luck out and find it online and the chances of that are very low. There we go. Alright, that back's on. So now I can put this in. And let's put that screw back in. There we go. It's good. Alright. Now, we can put the rest of the screws in. Let's get this one ready. How's that? Yep, that's lined up. Is that not going in? That was weird.
there. being weird. I'm going to put that back, but now I can put that wire clip in because I need that. There we go. Alright. So then there's this one. I'm going to put this screw back in. Then, let's get these wires plugged in, and then I will put that black plastic piece back on. Then I can finish reconnecting all the wires. And then we'll fire it up, and it'll work. And then I'll put the cover back on, and I will never, ever, ever work on an Epson again. At least not one of these. And at least not without proper service info that is required. Alright, let's get these in. Alright, that's good. Alright, let's put this back on. And this helps keep the wires from getting in the way and accidentally getting pinched or cooked. Other side, let's go plug that back in. That's it's there. This goes here. You know, I was wondering if it was something with the front panel, maybe a video mute. So I even hooked up the uh, network to this, you know, using the, the LAN connector in the back. And I used um, Projector Link software to talk to it. And the PJ Link stuff even said that it wasn't on Video Mute and that it should be working. And it wasn't. So that was when I knew that my no good, very bad day was going to get even worse. All right, so I'm going to do that flat flex. Before I do those, these will be the last connectors that I do. those down. Let's get this control keyboard plugged back in. And then lastly, the LCDs. Gentle, but thorough. So let's unlock. 
when there's nothing plugged in, they're easier to unlock. But when they uh, when they are not when they are plugged in, they're tight. Green is in. You can see these are two rows. Oh. Sounds like the HVAC guys are here. Or no, that's downstairs. Alright, those are plugged in. That's plugged in. Let's just go around. Alright, all the screws are tight. Let me move you guys and we're going to try it. Right, power cord. Just give it one more look see. Everything looks snug and happy. Nothing looks weird. I hope that's it. There's something else wrong. I don't know what to do. Alright, we have no lights. I think that's a good thing. Alright. Lens is opening. Let's see, lamp. Lamp is coming on. I see Epson. We'll see if we just have menu. If we have menu, I'm going to shut it down, put it back together, and then we'll test it. So, yeah, look at that. We got menu. All right, let me wait for these lights to stop flashing. And I'm going to turn it off, and then we'll uh, put the top on and stuff, and then we'll do the rest of the testing. I'm just waiting for those to finish. There we go. So now it's shutting down. It's gonna let that cool off a little bit and now we'll put the top on. All right, let me get my little tool out, my bypass tool. This is uh, literally just a paper clip, but it's bent so that I can push down, turn it, and you can see how it locks in there. Before we put the top on, we got that screw, that screw, that screw, that screw down there, right, yeah, there you go, now you can see it, right there, that one, that screw, that screw, that screw, and this screw, and then the ones that hold that frame in. So all the internal screws are in. We can set that top back on. All right. So we should just set right down. Yep. Nothing pushing up on it. That's good. This screw in. I have a helical. And then we have a. Fine thread, which goes right here. There we are. Then Okay, so this goes on this way. Lamp door that way. We got a whole bunch in the back. Let's 
see mount. We gotta sort the screws here. Let's see, these are for the mount. should be for the back. So I have a mixture. Ooh, I might have to pop that top off and take a look. We'll see. Let me see if I can uh, let's see if there's metal threads. Let's see. Metal, metal, metal. Metal, metal. Okay. So I think the helical black screws are going to be the ones that go up through the bottom and hold the back on. Yep, so far the count is adding up too. This is the last fine thread. And uh, we have just the helical threads left that are going to be in the bottom. So let me get something to put under this when I flip it over. Alright, so I took some uh, big bubble wrap and put that under it. So now I need to put these helical, black helical screws in. They go, nope, not there. They go in the front. That's right, I'm remembering now. I really need to go back and look at my teardown video, I think. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. I have six screws. Where did I miss one? We'll check back in here again in a moment. There might be a second one in here. Yeah, it sounds like the HVAC guys are getting uh, the heat ready. Oh, wrong side. This side. Let's see, those are good. Yeah, no, it looks alright. Got all the screws there. Hmm, we'll go back to this one. I hope I didn't forget something inside. I don't think so, but you never know. But these are the ones that are going to go into the bottom. So let's do that this way. There we are. Actually, let me go up. Yeah, there we are. Number three. For some reason, number three on this clutch seems to be the original tightness. Oh, there we go. Yep.
good. Hmm. There's one hole I forgot. Hmm. That is all the screws on the bottom, but I have one extra. I have to go back and double check my old video. The thing is, it all looks right. I don't feel anything loose. Now, there's a small chance that these came from another projector. I know that sounds like a cop out, and it kind of is. Go back into here and check. I'm glad I looked because I did forget one right here. That's the uh, black helical thread. There we are. But the silver one, I'm still not sure. Well, got to put Mr. Lamp assembly back in. Being that that was kind of the whole point of all of this nonsense. And I really appreciate the customer's patience and understanding. I would not have been too happy to receive that call. But you got to do what you got to do. We're human. Things happen. I will say this is only the second time in the, I don't know, 10 years or so I've been doing projectors and 20 some years I've been repairing stuff that I've had to do something like this where it was my fault and it ended up costing me a pile of money so thankfully it is not a common occurrence so now I'm just looking to see where that guy goes I, I got all the screws in as far as I can tell Yep, yep, yep. Those are in one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Yep, six. One, two. One, two, three. Four. Five. Six, seven. I feel like there should be one here, but nah, there's nothing. So, I don't know. I'll save it. I'll mark it that it's from a 5040. And if I hear of any issues, then at least I will still have the screw. There's a definite chance that that screw actually was not for this projector. But I can't say for sure, so we're just going to have to uh, chalk it up to, I don't know, whatever we chalk stuff like that up to. So let's flip this back over. And in flipping it over, I also did a FOD check, FOD check for an object and debris. 
and did not find any, didn't hear any rattling around. So let's wipe the top of this off. And then we'll head over to the uh, test area and I'll plug in the Raspberry Pi. And maybe I'll just plug in my laptop since we started with that. And we'll see how it looks. And then as long as I get a few hours out of this without any crazy temperature changes, this will be on its way back to the customer tomorrow. And there we go. So we're, uh, this is that Epson on my laptop. I just tested both HDMI ports. They're good. And uh, over here we have, uh, looks like Craig and... Couldn't see who the other guy was, if that was Sam or Mikey or what, Corey. Um, but that's the Tank Master guys doing their thing. Um, it is out of focus. I am not focusing it or changing the lens settings because they're set up for the customer. I don't want to move anything or change his, uh, his physical setup because that would be a real pain for him. And that's why it's not quite on my screen properly. So I'm going to leave it like that, but I'm going to let it run. Uh, as long as I get a few hours out of it and nothing looks overheated, we're going to let it go. So yeah, I, uh, I'm very happy to have this terrible experience out of, out of my life. The uh, main board, like I said, I, I, it's my fault somehow, or at the least I'm responsible for it. So, you know, it's the way it is sometimes. That is how you... Uh, Never want to work on an Epson again when you end up with a bad main board that you have to pay for. So if you have any questions about replacing the main board or the fan on your Epson 5040UB or similar projector in that series, go ahead and drop your question down in the uh, comments if you need a replacement lamp assembly for one of these. Check down in the uh, description. I'll have a link with a coupon code there. Um, However, I don't think you're ever going to see another Epson on my channel again. Uh, at least not anytime soon, and not one that I don't own, so if something happens to it, it's on me and I don't have to pay for it. So, them's the brakes. That's the way it is sometimes. I just... Uh, no bueno Epson. So, anyway, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. If you don't subscribe, think about hitting that subscribe button don't have to doesn't cost you anything but it does help me out also hit that like thing if you don't mind apparently it helps with the algorithm but most importantly as always thank you for watching